Hi and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. Today I will briefly talk about the advent of code because it's going to be upon us shortly and uh, I will give you the what, the why and the how of it. Let's start with what is it. So advent of code is a code puzzle competition. For every day of December, if you are participating, you will get a two-part uh, puzzle that you are supposed to solve with your code, post the answer, and the fastest ones will also enter the global leaderboard. More and more coders are attending this every year. And by the way, there is an interesting story for the scalability. I, I will put the link in the description section of my video as well. They've had to scale quite, quite heavily. Last year, there was about 270,000 people tracking the first puzzle. And from there, the puzzles get a bit harder. There will be less people finishing them. But anyways, there's a huge community and huge interest globally for this one. So I think that's pretty much it. If you log in using your Google or GitHub or some other credentials, then what happens, you will get 25 two-part puzzles to crack. And that might bring you to the question, why? Why would I invest any time on doing this one? Because you might be a professional coder like me, well, <laughs> more or less professional. But if you're getting paid to code, it might feel like a weird thing that why would I be then coding on my free time for fun? So let me give you a few reasons why this might be cool for you as well. Reason number one is that uh, if you're like me, if you're coding for money or planning to do that, so if you are looking for a professional software career or, or already in there, what will happen is that you start doing project work or internal services or products, whatever. Uh, the thing is that you will probably end up spending a lot of time with the same kind of problem and solution. It might take years to build it. In some cases, it takes even decades or at least one decade. I've seen those projects that just are huge. And uh, you will probably have a set stack of tools and technologies that you will be using to solve the problems. But if you are in this kind of situation, it might feel pretty cool to be able to try out some new cool languages and technologies and tools. And uh, then uh, another thing is that when you are working in a professional project, getting paid for it, unless it's very open, open source project, you might not be allowed to discuss it freely. So it might be that you cannot uh, talk about your work so much uh, with people outside your own project team. You cannot compare notes and compare uh, algorithms. So would this have been a better choice for this one? So with these kind of hobby coding puzzles, um, you can choose a new language, new tooling, so you can learn something new. You can choose new approaches. You can freely uh, discuss uh, your solutions with community of more than, than 200,000 people right now, I think. There is in total more than a million people registered for the website, but uh, last year 270,000 was the number to crack the first puzzle. So you have a huge community to kind of discuss and compare notes and compare code and compare different code being used to solve the same problem. So I think this is something we can really do. And this is almost free for you. You just need to allocate a little bit of time. So I hope I managed to kind of talk, talk you uh, getting at least a little bit curious about the advent of code here. And that now brings me to how you can do this. Before I go into details of that, I want to show you a few links here. So we don't just look at the static page. Uh, let's discuss a few things uh, that we can see on the website. So first of all, uh, if you want to... Um, the, uh, how, how the puzzles look like. Let's start from there. So the, here is 2022 version. And if I open the first day, we can see assignment. So here is kind of specification. And uh, we have some kind of example data, input data, output data, and a, a clear explanation of the calculations. And then once you have identified yourself, once you have logged in, then you can access your own personal puzzle version. So you typically get a small scale puzzle example. You get example data that you can crack. And once you do that, you get the second part to unlock with a little bit more data. So I think this is kind of nicely scoped to be something you can crack in a 
little bit of time, at least in the beginning. This brings me to one of my tips on how to approach this one. So I would recommend that if you're like me, so that you have life outside your work, like uh, perhaps family, if you are a kind of more mature coder like me, or you might have hobbies that are not coding related, uh, it might be a little bit difficult to find the time uh, and justify that you are, you are sitting on your computer. So how, how I do it is I time box a little bit. So I, I, I decide how much time I'm going to allocate. Let's say I say that every morning before my work, I'm going to allocate one hour and I will crack what I can in that time. If I cannot then I kind of uh, take a closer look at the puzzle. Is it still fun to crack? I might allocate more time. And at some point, uh, the puzzles typically for me start to take more than one hour. And at that point, I, I have to deliberate if I skip them, come back to them, or if I just uh, drop the event altogether. So uh, you don't need to finish anything. It's enough to get started even with one of the puzzles. And then you get the kind of the idea how these work and most, I think most important thing is that uh, you are only competing against yourself. In the beginning, at least. If you are a hotshot cracker and you manage to do this with efficient use of time, then don't listen to me. You are already in the leaderboards. But if you are just starting out, I would say that time box and understand that uh, cracking one doesn't obligate you to crack all. Don't feel bad about it. If it starts taking time, if it stops being funny, fun for you anymore, then just uh, it's okay to stop or skip things or cheat a little bit to get ahead. Take a look at some other answers. Uh, for me, the most important thing here is to have fun and to learn and to kind of compare notes. So those are for me, on my level, this is fun. And I know the leaderboards here, they are full of people who are really, really efficient. Let's see. On the first day, the fastest solving of the puzzle was 53 seconds here. On that level, you have to automate pulling the data, tracking it, verifying it, and then pushing it back. So you have to automate a lot and you have to be really bloody competitive. So uh, I say this is kind of another league, the top 100 on the leaderboards. Uh, this is another league of competition, as you can see, you are not allowed to use a lot of time and you, you have to know your game already and be very kind of preset to act immediately when it drops and be very precise. Okay. So uh, just kind of saying that there's two different games here. There's the competition and competition is fun. And if you are already there, it's a lot of fun and a lot you can do there. But I'm personally not kind of participating on that level. For me, I, I'm not even taking a look there, un, uh, except after it's done out of curiosity. But I'm just uh, going to kind of stick to the puzzles and uh, enjoyment and learning and sharing. That's the part for me here. Now, uh, probably worth mentioning, there's also the stats uh, part. So for each puzzle, we can see some statistics. So here is where I pulled the number that uh, the, the first day puzzle was cracked by 270,000 people. Uh, the first part of the puzzle only was cracked by minor kind of uh, community. They gave up after the first uh, star. I, I suppose they decided it's not fun because it's really easy on that level. But then 270,000 pulled through and then we can see that numbers are dropping by each day when it gets more involved, it gets lower. But then uh, for the kind of last of the Christmas day, some people are already preparing for Christmas and not thinking about coding. You can see the huge drop uh, around here. So 16th day, puzzles get harder, they start taking time and you have to really dedicate effort. However, even if you drop out in the middle, you can still go back and open the puzzles and uh, see how others have cracked them. By that time, there's a lot of solutions posted. Which takes me to one more hint, and that's um, enjoy the community. So don't try to crack these alone. Don't try to crack these in your own cavern. But instead, embrace the community of, of your company. If, you, if there is a group of people attending and participating, set up a Slack channel, join it. Have a company leaderboard. You can have private leaderboards as well. Also, embrace the Reddit community or something like that. Whatever is your poison. 
In Reddit, there is a very cool, I'll post a link below the video as well, very cool global community who is cross-posting all the solutions. Of course, uh, steer clear of the spoilers while you are cracking these, but after you have cracked the uh, codes, feel free to kind of peek what other others have been doing. Use AI to crack it again and see how the AI tools compare, etc. Now that I mentioned AI, I have to mention one thing that has changed. So last year, AI gave a quite unfair competitive advantage for people. There was no rules for the AI or against it, but some of the puzzles were cracked ridiculously fast with use of AI. And granted, use of AI definition can be a bit vague, but in some cases AI gives you quite kind of unsportsmanship advantage. So a new uh, kind of guideline here is that please don't use AI until the global leaderboard has filled. And even after that, if you are running with a private leaderboard, uh, you should probably have kind of guidelines uh, on how and when to use AI for that. I can, I can tell you that I'm a big fan of uh, AI assisted coding, so I will definitely be using AI, but not to mess up anybody else's fun. So I will be very careful to not use anything that even smells of AI uh, when, uh, when kind of um, competing with the people on the leaderboard. But once I have uh, submitted a solution or leaderboards are all filled up, um, at that point uh, I feel free to kind of play with it myself. And of course, if I have the solution, it's easy for me to compare offline without messing up anybody else's fun. So actually the company where I'm working, we will have AI group uh, kind of studying and researching the tooling and comparing AI against uh, just uh, pure manual work. So it should be fun, but be a bit careful with it this year. Uh, it's uh, You're unlikely to get busted for using it because nobody could easily tell unless you are at the top one of the leaderboard. <laughs> Even then, uh, it would be hard to prove. But just kind of be gentleman or gentlewoman here and uh, don't mess up anybody else's fun by use of AI. It would be polite to do so. And uh, you would be only cheating yourself if you, do, if you kind of do that. We have a guideline for this right now. But still, um, I would say still understand that uh, using AI can be one big fun part of this just or not for the competition, okay? I could end the video by sharing my own setup. Would that be fun for you? Now, I mentioned that feel free to try out new languages. So if you have, if you have been wondering how it would look like using Golang or Rust, how it would be like to learn that right now if you don't already know it, or um, how, how would it be using brain f or, or using uh, Arnold C language, one of my favorites, People have used all of those to solve the puzzles. Might not be the funnest thing to do, but for learning a new language, uh, a small tightly scoped problem is a great way to get started. And you will probably, for any language you can imagine, you will find good support. However, for me, the language itself is not the main interesting thing. So for this year, I have already set up my environment and I will be sticking to Python. So I'm using Jupyter Notebooks. Python is quite kind of straightforward and easy and very popular way to do things like this. I do have some optimizations here. So uh, I have some tooling to kind of uh, rapidly pull the data from the website to my machine so I don't need to log in and bother about that one. I have each day in a text file. Typically for each day you get input text file in the assignment and then you pull it and then you run your code against it and, and push the solution. For pushing the solution, I also have some scripting. Those are not really important because I, I, this is not about shaving off seconds or competing on the leaderboards. For me, uh, for me, it's mostly I'm lazy. I like to stick to my IDE when I'm doing things. So in the morning when I wake up 7 a.m., uh, I run my little magic scripts and pull the new data. And then I take a look in there, read the assignment. Then I figure out this was last year's puzzle solution parts. I figure out how it looks like. I get some output 
and then I post that in and then I know if I managed to crack the puzzle or not. And as I mentioned, the first days it's going to feel like really easy and fun and it only gets a little bit more difficult from there. And even once it gets difficult, the next days might again be easy. So don't give up so easily with the puzzles. But this is kind of my setup that I'm using right now. And typically I don't even need any specific libraries. I prefer to kind of write algorithms uh, like uh, pathfinding myself, just kind of to be able to play with them a bit more. It makes me a little bit slower, but that's my game. That's how I like to roll, you could say. Uh, another thing I like to do is visualization. So when I'm trying to understand a challenge, what I like to do is even do some small animations of the of the data. Here was some sand uh, sand uh, that was pouring from the top, and uh, I had a map of uh, items, and I wanted to visualize how the sand is pouring from the top, and I I did an animated GIF to do that. And I enjoy these a little bit. I enjoy visualizing things, even if I wouldn't be needing those, but still it's something I like to do. And if you have been watching what other people do, they do really, really crazy things. So I've seen animations using game engines, where if there is elephants trying to escape a cavern system, well, you actually have elephants escaping a cavern system. So that's really, really, really crazy stuff. I think I spent enough time with my video already, but I wanted to make this video even though last year I made quite similar video if you have been subscriber on my channel and why wouldn't you be? Then you might have already seen my earlier video and this is a rather similar one. But I'm still doing this again because first of all, I'm excited for 1st of December. I will be attending this year, I will be having fun. And as I mentioned, our company is happily having a little community doing this. And uh, the benefits are that uh, th there's like uh, teams outside the project teams. Uh, there is going to be learning and sharing and even caring. And that's always fun. Um, that's kind of uh, what makes my heart uh, beat uh, uh, faster still after all these years. Having fun around the code and sharing is still something that I much treasure. And uh, being able to compare notes with the larger community, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward for the crazy puzzles. And thanks, Eric Wassel, for putting the effort. I hear that coming up with these puzzles and prep work now takes about five months before December. And they are doing it for free just to create this fun. So thank you. I appreciate highly what you are doing there. And uh, I will drop some cool links below the video. And by now, if you haven't already clicked the like button and you watch this, please do so. The likes really count uh, and share the link to this video for, for your friends. If I manage to get you to participate and you wouldn't have otherwise, uh, the video made what it's supposed to do. So join the community. Perhaps we can, we can get even more than 270,000 people to join the first puzzle this year. Otherwise, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, any comments, questions, drop them below the video. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.